Hi, my name is Dan Keen. I'm a composer, producer, and musician based in London. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today, I'm making a video in partnership with Fracture Sounds to show you their new Spotlight Piano, their flagship grand, which is aimed more at kind of more emotive, more cinematic music, but it has a whole load of really beautiful features under the hood, which I was excited to try out. I wanted to showcase this product in a slightly different light than you might expect. So I've created a piece that I actually think is quite interesting, but what I'm really pleased with is that I've used only the piano with the exception of a little sine wave bass. So I'm gonna play you the piece first and then I'm gonna break it down in the way that I used to on this channel and it's been too long, but let's get on with it. As always, the most important thing that you should take away from a piece like this is that I had fun making it because I love hearing music that people have had fun making and I had a lot of fun making this. I suppose going into this, I wanted to write something that felt cinematic and kind of deep and moving, but also just like really vibey. I know vibey isn't really a word. It's more kind of it's a mood, I suppose. But by the time I got to this final section in section four, I just wanted to feel like things were sort of surging. I feel like we went on a bit of a journey. We started in this really psychedelic sort of atmospheric world. We went into something that's a little more your kind of TV drama style thing. We went into a pretty dark moment over here, I felt, with the really close, intimate sounding piano. And then we end with the resurgence 
uh, vibe, which I thoroughly enjoyed. I started with this dream sequence, which is so easy to write. I mean, you just have to play these extended chords and they just write themselves. this lovely sort of color shift as it goes. It starts off quite high up because I think that sort of encourages a sense of vulnerability. Uh, and then as we go through, it gets a little lower. Now I was gonna leave that as it was, but then when I added my sign base down here along with it, It felt like we'd suddenly got a sense of grounding. It felt a little bit more dramatic and sort of emotional. So I then opened this translucent patch, which by itself sounds like this. Again, so beautiful, so easy to play. So here I'm actually using the wisps, the flare and the mist in combination together. They just sound so lovely. What I think this does really well in this context, specifically in film music and more emotive music, is it takes you to that place really quickly, but it's not distracting. It's static, but it, it is moving, it's alive. Here I'm using the mod wheel to control the atmosphere intensity, and it works really well to gradually sort of open up the sound. I've turned the reverb up lots here. I've got the shimmer setting turned on and I've also enabled the fade in, which delays the impact of the reverb on a sound. Less important on this padded texture, but if you're doing something quick, um, it avoids that kind of sharp stabbing sound that you can get sometimes in impulse responses. So next I move into this piano here, which is really beautiful. I love systems music and this momentum that kind of builds gradually and it's got almost like a train-like sound to it. So then I just decided to embellish that a little further with this piano here that's just doing a very simple line. Again, it creates this sense of drama, sense of pace, momentum, all of the things that help build a bit of tension within a scene. I'm using all three microphones here, mainly favoring the close, but as you can see, I'm using the aligned time alignment setting. So what this does is it phase aligns the mic signals so that whether you're playing right at the very back of the hall or right up close with the instrument, the samples hit bang on exactly the same every time. Now this creates a sound which is ultimately more punchy, more powerful. It uses the, the weight of the hall to get behind the samples right when they hit. Um, what you'd typically have normally, and what would happen if we dragged this over to the natural sound, is that you'd get a slight pre-delay because of the length of time it takes for notes to reach those mics at the back of the room. So in sections like this with lots of momentum, it's quite useful to have that time-aligned setting turned on. This here is a little kind of tease of what's to come later. I wanted to use this piano in a bit more of a hybrid context, not just writing it as a sort of emotive piano line, not just using the atmosphere layers, but seeing what I could do to create some extra effects as well. So in this green section here, I've got a few different things going on. I'm using an Echo, Echo Boy, our trusty friend. And I've saturated it to buggery using the Memory Man setting, which is nice. This just creates a nice bit of movement between what would otherwise be a fairly kind of down the middle signal. I'm then EQing it a little bit, and then I'm adding an imager to really bring out that left-right ping-ponging effect. And then I'm using the LFO tool, which helps to create a slight sort of pumping effect. Finally, this is going out to bus 29, which has a whole host of sounds in it. But the main thing is that it's providing reverb, it's providing a bit of distortion, it's creating that pumping again, and the stereo image is flipped. So that just creates 
a bit more variety in the sound. You can hear it sort of creeping in like that, which is really cool. I really like that sound. I suppose staying on the more post-produced sounds, um, here is a sound that I've called Deep Underwater. So this is using a few things. It starts with the piano being down-tuned by eight semitones, so you already start with the really thuddy sound. And then I've massively limited the timbre scaling and the volume scaling, so we end up with a really consistent tone that's very soft. I then put this through a couple of EQs just to make it even deader. Then I put it through my trusty friend, the Super Plate, new from Sound Toys. Then through AB Vortex um, by Audio Brewers. Not exactly sure how this works, but it sounds pretty cool. More EQ just to get rid of the kind of huff in the middle of this. And then a bit of Decapitator. Again, only on 39%, so it's mainly dry, but just a just a hint. And then I'm using a mono maker here at 50 hertz, so everything below 51 hertz is going to be in mono down the center, which I find helps with more bassy sounds. When I move on later in the piece here uh, into this fourth section, I kind of wanted it to feel like a basement where someone's going through a really tough time and they're just turning up the speakers to the loudest volume to kind of drown out their sorrows. That's kind of what I hear in that. Anyway, I'll return to that in a moment because I wanted to show you how we then get into this faux felt hyper close sound. This transition's lovely. I'm using the submerged patch, um, but it's mainly the atmospheric sound, so you get this slight delay. The colour and the timbre shift have been turned down, so it's a slightly darker sound, but what you end up with is a rush of sound that sort of dissipates quite quickly. I love that it just lingers on that D-sharp there. I've got this mist sound, which again, just helps to fill in the texture. I had a professor who used to say that before you start painting, you need to make the canvas. And I think sounds like this are a really good canvas. It, it makes you write a little bit more simply um, because so much of the texture and the, the feeling and the movement is already there. Again, the simpler the sound, the better really, um, because there's already quite a lot going on in this. One thing that I love to do is tune samples down. I've been doing it for a long time. And with this, I've tuned it down by six semitones already. So if I play it at the pitch that it was at before, you can tell it just sounds a little different. I've turned up the hammers and the pedals quite a lot, so it just feels like you're inside the piano. Again, only using the close mics on this, so it's a really dead sound, which is great that we've got that flexibility between close, mid, and far. Okay, moving on to what is ultimately my favorite section, uh, which is this more system sound. So I showed you this piano before, the balanced echoes, which are playing this motif. It's only two chords, it just oscillates back and forward. The chords in the bass are running a sort of eight bar loop, so it doesn't feel like it's only two chords. Maybe it does to you. These two lines are playing exactly the same thing, so you've got your really balanced sound, and then you've got your kind of more effect-driven sound.
It's funny, earlier when I was preparing for this video, I turned the pedal noise down and I suddenly noticed something was missing and it reminded me how much of an effect a pedal noise can be within a track. There's something about it that just adds a little kind of breath of fresh air. Um, so I kept it in, in the end. Now you've already been acquainted with the Deep Underwater and Sign Plus bass, but again, I love this sound, so here's what it sounds like again. You can see here that I've actually turned the mod wheel all the way up, so that atmosphere intensity is um, as big as it can be right now, which is great because it's sort of soaking in all of these great sounds in the upper frequencies. This little piano motif. Love that bit. Um, so what's happened here is we've got this perspective slider, which is a really useful way of dialing in a mix. So on this side, I can have just the close, and then somewhere in between, I can have more of the mid, and then at the top, I can have the far. Um, of course, you can right click this or control click and add this to a CC automation. So I've actually used a fader on my fader bank to create this effect, which is ultimately blending between the very close mics all the way to the far. And I've called it the perspective dolly shot because it's basically like pushing away. Um, it doesn't necessarily get quieter, but it just, I don't know, it, it loses focus, I suppose, uh, which I really like. It's like someone's leaving out of the room. Love that. Um, you might have heard a little bit of distortion there. That's not clipping on this side. Um, it's some automation, which I'll show you in a moment. So that's the kind of outline of the piece. A few tips that I'd have for anybody who's looking to create a piece like this or whatever is consider that your high registers are more for your more vulnerable sounds. And as soon as you have those low notes, it just brings a sense of kind of grounding. I thought I was going to go down that more kind of high register route all the way through this section, but then I decided that actually I want people to feel kind of moved by this moment. So that's why I added these lower uh, harmonies in. Something that I do a lot is sort of depth and contrast. So when we get to this second section here, you can see that almost everything drops out. And I think that adds a sense of drama that when this next section comes in, um, we have got a little bit more kind of anticipation of that. So that's quite helpful. On this dream sequence here, um, I've used dynamic EQ within the Pro Q3. So it's effectively a compressor. Um, you can use the dynamic EQ separate from the main kind of frequency scoops. And this just gives you a lot of control over your sound. Throughout this first section, I've used an EQ sweep. So what I did was um, I basically opened my, my, my tools here and I've got this EQ that I'm riding the different levels for the high and low cuts. And this creates a really nice sense of opening and closing. It's a great trick, this. Uh, all you have to do is put it from read into uh, touch or latch, and then you can play with it and it will remember all these things as you go. I didn't want to give it all away at that point. And then you can kind of expand out. 
interestingly, as the piece goes on, um, I then have everything open out. So by the end, we should feel really light and open. I know I do. I think that sounds awesome. With a piece like this, and in my own practice, I find that I tend to try to create contrast within the parts that I'm writing for. So take this as an example. We've got the translucent layers and then these soft touch sections. With these rhythms, they're dry, they're close. I'm going to contrast that with slow, lush, more reverberant, more kind of far away, distant sounds. And I find that that can do a really good job of creating a nice separation between the layers. In a weird way, I think buses actually really help me to separate how I think about stuff in my mind. So knowing that this is just the low end stuff, I would normally have a bass stem if I've got more than one bass instrument, but this deep underwater patch for me feels, it feels kind of like a bass because it's serving in the same purpose. Um, having the system stuff separate, again, is quite useful. And then um, this more Atmos layers, it's just nice to have that separation between the two. And of course, you can then um, do some bus effects if you want to as well. Now, my master bus is actually uh, doing quite a lot to the sound. So I'm going to play you what this sounds like towards the end of the piece. And then I'm going to turn on this effects chain, which looks a little bit intense, but it's it's all for good reason. So I approach that in a couple of ways. Um, the first one is using Thermal by Output. I really like this. This is the hot glue preset that I've kind of warped a little bit. Um, I mentioned earlier, I've got some automation towards the end. So this mid driver only starts to come in from section three onwards, um, which adds just a nice little bit of something, something. And then I've also got the decapitator as well. Um, which creates a sense of drama. I love the idea of having something that sort of swells and distorts and mangles a little bit and then comes out. Normally, if I were doing something a little bit more aggressive, if I had something with drums or maybe some more kind of distorted bass lines and stuff like that, I would distort this further so it sounds more like a kind of bit crusher sound. Um, but for this piece, I didn't want you to think that a piano was just badly recorded, um, but I do think this is quite tasteful. I've used a little bit of gentle saturation here with the FabFilter Satin, which I love. Um, I've got my sort of corrective EQ here, which is the FabFilter Pro Q3, using again another dynamic EQ here just to bring down some of the woof of the low kind of 120 hertz frequencies. For my more kind of artistic EQs, I've got the Marg EQ, which has a fantastic high-end airband. And I've also got the Pulsar Model 8200, which sounds really, really great for corrective EQ, but also just more kind of musical sounds. Say what you will about waves, but this MV2 I use pretty much every day. Um, it's really good at compression, but then also bringing up the low level as well. So it's a great expander and compressor built in. With a piece like this that I wanted to feel like it was sort of surging by the end, um, using this low level and high level in combination with each other just helps to keep it in check. It's also really great on basses. Um, I use it a lot on vocals as well. Just anything where you think this level's moving around a bit too much, just want it to sit in one place. And I think that's about it. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe if you haven't done already. If you want to check out Spotlight Piano, do so at the links down below. And I'll see you again very soon. Goodbye.